Hello. This is Susanna Bauman getting ready for our live um, uh, interview tonight. And we are going to have, hello again, I think. Uh, we are going to have uh, our special guest. It's um, Daphne Rose Sanchez leading to uh, our uh, 2020 Women uh, Entrepreneur Empowerment Summit. So thank you. I see a lot of uh, all my, my members and other people that I follow on Instagram, Tanil Ortiz, hi. Uh, Adriana, how are you? Uh, we're waiting for um, Daphne. And the, so we can talk a little bit more about what the, uh, the, the, this event is about. Every year we conduct the Entrepreneur Empowerment Lunch which is a uh, series of workshops where I invite members of uh, Latinas in Business to talk about their uh, certain topics and uh, share their experience uh, to those who are successful and uh, what they have done with their businesses. So it is very, very interesting. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic this year, we were unable to, um, to produce that event live. And uh, so we waited a little bit, and now we are having our first virtual uh, event, which is going to be short but sweet. And uh, so um, we invite you all to register. It's, a, it's on Eventbrite. It's HTTP 2020weeses.eventbrite.com. So hello, Oscar. I want to wave you. Hello. Uh, who, who else is there? Sintimin. There she is. Paola Gutierrez. Um, so we're very excited that um, during the event, we're going to give awards to 13 Latinas. Uh, Latinas who have been in our spotlight uh, during, uh, from March of last year to uh, March of this year. And they have been on, on our spotlight and we feature them, we promote them, we gave them social media campaigns and we help them build their businesses. This year is very important that you guys support us because it's been rough for all Latina entrepreneurs. Many of them are just uh, even thinking about closing their business and we don't want anybody to close their business. We want everybody to really uh, be able to uh, participate. I see um, Kinetic com com Communities now, she's on. Um, Daphne, you just have to request to get a uh, live and I'll get you in. I'm learning this, so I'm so excited. <laughs> I've never done these interviews before, but everybody tells me that Everything is going on on um, Instagram, so we, we have to learn, right? We have to learn. Um, I was talking, uh, there she is. So I was talking that, um, I was talking about uh, uh, um, award ceremony. I said um, 13 Latinas, 12 were featured on Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, Annie uh, Rose is one of our uh, Latin uh, she is, is about the, the award ceremony. If you have a little more light, that will be better. Uh, very dark. Um, uh, the biggest award every year we select there in the community. This year we chose Yasuko, is the executive director for um, Women Entrepreneur of the City of New York. So, we're going to have a fantastic event. Again, it's a pride to support us. It's inspirational. It's not going to be a long talk. 
we're going to have videos, we are going to have prizes, giveaways, so it's really going to be interesting. Okay, I think you're having, um, I think that Fanny is having a little bit of uh, problems with the connection, so we'll see how it goes, because I see that she's idling. Uh, let's see if she can connect again. joined I see uh, I think she's gonna come in again um, we have a surprise for during the um, during the event a special appearance and uh, every week every night of this week and next week we're going to be interviewing all the entrepreneurs and the speakers and you're gonna see that they are fantastic they are uh, absolutely um, uh, in incredible speakers, and they are okay. Yeah. A little bit of problem with your connection. Please. Yeah, yeah, my connection's been a little wonky today. Wonky. Okay. All right. So, why don't you tell us the fantastic things you do at Kinetic Community? When I saw your profile, I was like, "What? What are you doing?" <laughs> so, tell us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Daphne Sanchez. I'm the executive director of Kinetic Community Consulting. We are an energy equity consulting firm here in New York City. Um, a lot of times when people hear that, they're like, what is that? Well, basically, there is the energy industry does programs that help low income communities and communities of color transition from hazardous materials like fossil fuels to cleaner um, electricity, and cleaner energy like solar panels um, and other renewable heating and cooling. So my company works with government and utilities to make sure that they do programming that is actually helpful for our communities um, and that is accessible to all. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So tell us um, what, what neighborhoods do you work with or how do you connect people or how you really um, fulfill your mission? Yeah, so we actually work throughout the five boroughs and in Westchester. We work predominantly with black and brown communities. Um, what we, we being a, a New York based company that have been here, um, I've been in New York all my life, my, and my, I'm a fifth generation New Yorker. Um, so we really love, leverage the existing nonprofits that are providing social services, that are providing food support, that are providing housing support, um, and helping them understand like, hey, you know, did you know you can get a free energy audit for your home? A lot of people yeah. don't know that. Yeah. yeah. You can get free LED bulbs in buildings. They'll go in and they'll change it all. You can get a free air conditioner for senior citizens now. So a lot of people don't know these programs exist. And we, we work with nonprofits, um, churches, uh, community organizations, and letting them know and also connecting them um, to those resources directly. Right, right. And how can people uh, reach out to you? How, they, how do they connect with you to uh, request information about those programs? So feel free to connect with us via um, Instagram, um, at Kinetic Communities Consulting. You can also reach out to us directly at info at kc3.nyc. And I can put that in the chat as well. Okay, that would be great. Yes, yes. So, um, tell us, tell us how this is going for you, for your organization, and for the um, What has been one of the most difficult things to uh, accomplish during this What, what, is, what, what are you dealing with? What are the problems? Right. So, you know, a lot of our work centers on fighting climate change and making sure that buildings are as sustainable as they can be, especially for our communities. Um, when COVID happened, our communities completely had to switch their, their focus from helping you know, trying to change their boilers to really making sure that the community and the people that live in the buildings have food and the basic necessities of water um, and electricity. Right. And so our organization has kind of focused on two fronts. 
One is ensuring that our partners, these community partners, the churches, um, that they have the the connections to this to the local farmers, so that they can share food and resources. And then the other part of us, um, we created something called the Collective Resiliency Fund. Um, we realized that a lot of uh, women, specifically women of color in the industry, were being laid off from their jobs. If they recently graduated, they couldn't find the job. So we created a fund um, where we are donating money to support those women during these hard times. And we're asking other leaders in the energy industry to also step up and support uh, women of color that are in the field. Okay. So it's truly a power collaboration. Exactly. A number of um, organizations that are kind of related in this same industry, and you have to reach out. Yeah, which is fantastic because uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, events. Now, is where in a cost profit world. We are now in a construction. We, we cannot do everything by ourselves. Uh, we're asking yeah, people to, some people don't have the resources um, uh, for uh, in, in updating their uh, digital um, you know, tools or people to get knowledge. And a lot of, a lot, a lot of entrepreneurs really can use that. What is specifically what you could provide for the um, entrepreneurs at this point. Can you repeat the question, Susanna? I'm sorry, my internet is going out a little bit. <laughs> so, what is specifically, for instance, for for entrepreneurs that are battling this this pandemic? What can, how can you help them with? Yeah, energy or yeah. For entrepreneurs, if you live in New York City, there are programs that will support you. Um, there is a program called the Home Performance with Energy Star where we can send out an engineer at no cost um, to look at your home. And they'll tell you, you know, what is using the most energy and you can be more mindful of how that consumption happens so that you can lower your bills. It's called the Home Performance with Energy Star program. The other okay. thing is that if you are... Um, as I mentioned, a woman of color in the sustainability space and an entrepreneur in that space, we do have something called a collective resiliency fund. It is in our Instagram, so you can look at that, where we are um, providing grants. And we're going to have multiple rounds of grants. We're doing it with the Women of Color Collective Sustainability of $300 to support you to continue doing um, what you're interested in doing. And lastly, if you live in a multifamily building, um, there is a program called Empower New York, where again we'll in, we'll send out some contractors. Canada will send out some contractors. They'll look at your your apartment. They'll uh, seal around the windows and and your door. And if you have an old fridge, they can even replace you and give you a brand new fridge free of charge. Wow! Wow! My yeah. <laughs> that is a great program. That is very yeah. very important because. A lot of people now are unemployed and lose their income, and they're going to be in a lot of facilities. Start with a number twenty-four. I'll be fine. Every day, not every day. Uh, so, is there a, a silver lining in all this pandemic? Um, oh, she's gone again. Oh, no, we lost her for a minute. This is so interesting. So, uh, those who, so those who want to I move closer to the window to get more connection. <laughs> yeah. So those, I was just some, uh, make a summary. Those who wants to reach out for um, a solution, uh, for specific, specific uh, health, with your services or for your business at Kinetic Community. Um, Full cool purchase all over. You know, that's a beautiful website. And I was so um, 
Yeah, we definitely have seen a silver lining. Okay. All right, here we go again. Uh, I think, you know, uh, when we do this, um, it's important that we all, okay, there she's back, that... Um, Sometimes you are, um, you know, connected or close to your source of uh, the internet. The internet loves to work until uh, until we have this meeting, right? <laughs> I think the silver lining is that with um, with COVID and climate change, people are realizing the intersection and the need, specifically for like Latino communities, um, to have a safer and cleaner environment. And right. so we are seeing a big push to support our communities to get more jobs in clean energy, more jobs in solar, more jobs in renewable technology. We're also seeing a big push in funding for people to become um, entrepreneurs, um, for people to become leaders in the space. Um, we've also seen folks challenging large companies um, to ensure that they are not only saying they're committed to diversity, but they're actually going to move forward with it, um, that they will be hiring more people of color and allowing them to lead or giving them their position that they rightly, rightfully deserve um, to lead uh, with these initiatives on sustainability. And it's seen through across the country, not only in, in New York City, we're seeing it in Chicago, we're seeing it in California, we're seeing it in New Orleans. Um, it's a very big movement that, because of COVID, people are now seeing the intersection of health, of housing, of the economy, and of the climate. Right. Yes, yes. So, uh, so tell me, um, what was your experience in working with us? What, what was your experience in working with Latinas in business? Did you find the support with us? I really want to hear, um, not, not for me, but for other women to know that we are there for you. How, how did you feel that we were there for you? I think one of the things that I really love in Latinas in business is it gives you the opportunity to engage a different kind of um, community. Um, it's a community of business women that have been leading in different industries. It gives you the opportunity to learn about how are they being creative in their marketing, marketing strategies, how are they being creative um, in community engagement, and it's creating those relationships and, the, and those networks. And um, as you mentioned, right, the, the, the power of collaboration, it's one of the things that's very unique to Latinas in business. And I, I've been very grateful to participate um, in a lot of your events um, and programming. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> I've heard also um, a, a couple times, right? Uh, yeah. An articles about recently one about the coronavirus situation in new york so we do this all for free and uh we do this as our work of love and uh because we want to help i had a business for my business that never money for that because you're putting money for or brands or for whatever it is that you have to buy that so um me too thank you so much that's such a great privilege i i um i am very humbled you know you are a, a trailblazer and a and a woman in this in in the business industry that i i look i look up to um, so thank you so much for this opportunity and this privilege um, to be a recipient of the award um, and to participate with other trailblazer Latinas. Yes, well, I and I look up to you guys because um, you have the, uh, I have obviously a lot of experience, too, too much, too much to tell, but um, you are now in the trenches. I mean, it's a very, very difficult world. You have to live in. Not that before it was easy, but 
But right now, uh, we never thought that we were going to go through a pandemic, the global pandemic. We never thought that we were going to really live uh, in some work, complicated work relationships. We're not going to be able to uh, personal. It, that's what it's all about. And, uh, what do you what do you support to who are our other Latinas? Not, not particularly about our organization, but what would you say to other Latinas that they are struggling? Because you started struggling, but now you have so much more established. Yeah, I would say, you know, stick to your guts with your ideas, making sure that you have um, your business plan um, kind of marketed out to your clientele, making sure that it is something that people are um, wanting to participate and partner with you. And also don't sell yourself short. You know, you are valuable, making sure that you are putting the right price tag on what you are on your services is so critical. It's so critical um, because we tend to undervalue our, our, our work and our services because we do it out of the goodness of our heart or whatever reason, but you have to put a premium price tag on it because you it's your it's your baby and you want to make sure that people understand like this is something that you've done that's very intentional um, and that will impact them um, in a positive way. So right. please keep your heads up and also really consider um, different types of financial vehicles that you can use. Not only, you know, when you start up your business, um, having working capital, but also having a capital savings plan, right? Because if you have that, that's, that's what really has helped us during COVID is that we had a, a separate savings plan and it's able to keep our company going. And a lot of folks, it's, it's very difficult to think about saving for, for business, but it's, it's, it's critical. I, 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 in fact, I, now that you're talking financial, uh, what was your experience with the subsidies? What was your experience? Did you guys apply for subsidies? Did you apply for the federal funding? Uh, nonprofits were able to. Yeah, we did not. Um, we did not apply for it um, for the sake of just understanding that there were a lot of other firms that really needed it. Um, we decided to kind of put ourselves together and think, okay, you know, what is – our bare bones operation and let's continue operating and continue supporting our communities because we know that there are dozens and dozens of other small businesses that were literally thinking that they have to permanently close shop. Um, and so we wanted to support those um, community members and support those businesses first. So we decided um, consciously not to, to move forward with that. Not everybody thought like you, uh, as <laughs> Especially big companies, big companies took advantage immediately of the situation. Yes, it's the it's the extractive, exploitative culture, and this is what we're trying to say. Like as new companies, we need to set a new trend forward. We need to think holistically of our community and our environment. We can't be greedy and selfish like everyone else that came before us, especially those big companies that took it, even though they weren't eligible for it. Correct. Correct. And unfortunately, yes, uh, it is It is very common that companies um, think, like you said, in a very selfish, even if protecting, I would say some might be protecting their employees. I, I accept that to even that point. But I heard something, someone called house, house in Montana for a million dollars. So we, we really need to live in that, like I said, Sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. What are do you, do you see in your community the most hardship of businesses and, and other you know, 
to stay in your commute, your work commute. Yeah, I think the hardship is just not knowing when is things going to normalize post COVID. I think a lot of small businesses, um, you know, went out, received the funding, and are trying to coast for the next three to six months. But the the uncertainty past six months is really what's scary for small businesses and entrepreneurs that recently started. You know, they had some ideas in the pipeline. And we're seeing that people are being more conservative of what they're buying, um, right. and so we, so it is, it is very difficult. We see it, you know, with the local restaurants, um, local beauty stores. They are really trying to brace for the impact, even though we are reopening. Right, we're in the third term of reopening, but it doesn't mean that people are. Um, There, there's not enough of the local economy being generated where people are working and people can buy and people are buying. Um, so there's definitely a, a long-term financial impact um, for the communities in in New York City and in Brooklyn specifically. Right, right, right. Well, it's funny because you know I haven't, I haven't, I was thinking I haven't worked in in, in, in months, and I was like, <laughs> there, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that that um, or gas put gas in my car because really um, that I'm sure that that's a big impact that at this point we are still yet because the, the the government has been throwing a lot of money to us but uh, thinking that was something to be put uh, so New Jersey and New York which kind of holding together now they're we're slowly starting to uh, recover it's great but right. other parts of the country uh, don't so what do you know about other organizations in the country that you're really Oh, now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, part now. of a cold. Isn't that funny? So, that, yeah. yeah. The, they, the phones just don't want to work with us, right? <laughs> I'm part of a coalition called New Hub, which is a network for energy, water, and affordable housing buildings. It's a, it's a nationwide coalition. And what we're seeing is a trend of um, organizations in other states, like I said, in Louisiana and Illinois and Chicago, um, in, um, in San Francisco, California, that they are now having to kind of change gears where they're like working on climate change work and energy efficiency. Um, and because of the spike of new cases that are happening down south and in California, really refocusing their efforts on like health advocacy and ensuring that those community members um, are aware of what, what needs to happen and how they can maintain safely. Because one thing to know is, you know, as we work in the intersection of energy and housing, the reason why safe, clean housing is necessary is because there's really not a lot of it in, in urban cities. Um, so imagine in cities like in California, similar to New York City, where If you have one person that has COVID and they they are a roommate with five other people, it creates a much dangerous, a, a more dangerous situation. Um, so a lot of the organizations, the nonprofits that we work with across the country are really kind of um, transitioning their work from climate justice to social justice um, and health advocacy to make sure that their community have proper protocols in place, especially when they're living um, within small, um, small apartment settings. Correct. That's, that is fantastic. I admire you so much because you have, you have such a, a clear uh, purpose. Your vision is so clear. You have been able to build this, this collaborations all over the country. And uh, how old are you? I'm <laughs> so I recently was awarded one of the 30 under 30. I'm 27 years old. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I I love the work that I do. So yeah. I, I feel like I've been in it for way longer. <laughs> That's so, and I, I, I hope you don't get burned out because uh, working in the nonprofit sector sometimes it's very, very demanding, uh, especially because. Um, uh, 
the people who work in the nonprofit sector usually is not uh, you know, compensated. In the that, yeah, you can get burnout in the corporate as well, but you know, when you see it, 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 it's a little but well, that doesn't happen in nonprofit. Sometimes people work more, uh, and because they have what they do, that is super fantastic. I love to see these brilliant work the community. I love you to to see this Thank you so much. And so on the thirtieth. Yes, I will see you on the 30th. Thank you so much again. And it was a pleasure speaking with you all. And, and um, I'm excited. <laughs> oh, for everybody that joined, and yeah, please, please support our event. Again, Tuesday, it's a Ju uh, July 30th at 1 p.m. And uh, it's on Eventbrite. Look for 20 W-E-S. That event. Love you. Bye. Bye.